Good morning, students. So we are starting our math work for Monday, October 26th. And what we have today is a review of all of the different kinds of fraction problems that we have been studying. So you're going to have some adding of mixed numbers, some subtracting of mixed numbers, some adding of simple fractions, um, some subtracting of fractions from whole numbers. So although you have already done all of these different kinds of problems, you may need to go back in your book to remind yourself of the certain rules and steps according to each problem, because it may be hard to remember what um, uh, process or steps each one uh, needs. So for example, we have for sample one, we have adding fractions, um, mixed number fractions. So if in case you were to not remember how you start adding a mixed number fraction, then I would suggest you go back and you find where we started adding mixed numbers. So we have here on page 26, for example, is when we started learning how to add our mixed numerals. So each page that we have done has the different uh, processes that we did. So don't worry if you forgot how to do a certain kind because in your previous work, you have the steps and the rules and the directions. And of course, I'm available on Zoom to help you remember any of the different um, processes, but pretty much for all of them, you focus on the fractions first. So you either add or subtract fractions first. If it's um, subtraction, sometimes you may have to borrow from the number, like for example, here on sample two, which I will do with you. And um, some of them you may have to change the improper fraction to a mixed number. And ultimately you may have to reduce. So although it seems like a lot of work, if you just focus on them one by one, you'll be fine. So just take a look at your symbols, make sure you know whether you're adding and subtracting so you don't get confused and start with your fractions before you go to your mixed number. So all of our work has been with adding with like denominators. So that means our denominators are always the same, which has made the process easier. But next week, or this week actually, as we go on, we will be studying improper or um, unlike denominators, excuse me. So what I'm going to do for now is just do these first two samples, and this will give you kind of a reminder on what to do with adding and subtracting mixed numerals. And then the rest of them should be pretty easy. And like I said, you can go back to um, guide yourself with some of those instructions. So here for sample one, we have, let me do this, two and five over six plus three and two over six. So we are adding. So we're going to add our top numbers first. So we have here, seven plus two, which is um, uh, five plus two, I'm sorry, which is seven over our denominator six. And we notice already that we have an improper fraction. So what we would need to do is change this to a mixed number before we add it to our whole numbers here. So we're going to do our process for changing an improper fraction to a mixed number. So six going into seven once. So we have here one and then one over six. Remember that when we started? So now we have a, a, a one and one over six that we have to add to these numbers. So here we have two plus three is five plus one is six. And then our fraction one over six. So that's just going back to adding mixed numbers. Then here for sample two, we have a subtraction problem that requires an extra step, which is good. So we have five and one four minus two and three fourths. So what we're going to do is focus on the fractions first as usual, but you'll notice that we cannot subtract three from one. So remember that we borrow one from the five, change it to a four and give ourselves a fraction here using our denominator form. 
so then we'll have one plus four is five, five over four. Now our fraction is big enough. So we're going to do five minus three, and five minus three is two over our denominator four. And then we subtract four minus two is two. Now our last step is to make sure that we can reduce, and we can because we can do two into two once and two into four twice. So we have reduced our fraction to two and a half. So if you're having a hard time remembering um, how we did this last week, you can go back to our YouTube video for the day that we added and subtracted mixed numbers. And I can also help give reminders today at 11 o'clock. And now we have our language arts assignment for Monday, and we're going to be working on simple and compound sentences. So this should be pretty familiar as we've been working a lot with compound subjects and compound nouns and compound verbs. So here at the beginning, it says to identify the characteristics of the words in italic. So italic means the slanted words, which I have highlighted here. So it says, for example, God put a rainbow in the sky. So it's just giving an example that rainbow is a compound noun because it is a compound word that is a noun, like rainbow. And then Noah and his family looked up to the sky. This is a compound subject, which means more than one subject in the sentence. They saw the rainbow and understood God's promises. So here we have two verbs. So that would mean that we have a compound verb, more than one verb. So now that we know all about compound nouns, compound verbs, and compound subjects, we are going to be continuing to study simple sentences and compound sentences and the difference between the two. So it says here that two simple sentences can be combi combined to make a compound sentence, which we have done before. Mark tried out for the team and he made it. So this is making a compound sentence from two phrases. Mark tried out for the team, he made it. But we can simply put it into two, put it into one long sentence. Mark tried out for the team and made it. And again, our joining words, it says what word joins the two simple sentences. And we're used to having and as our joining word, as we did last week, and as we have been including in our diagrams. So just to get um, to our definitions to compare what a simple sentence and a compound sentence is, we have here, simple sentence contains one subject, one verb. But, the verb can be compound and the subject too, but it's simple. So it says, for example, the horses became frightened. So here we have just a simple sentence. We have one subject, horses, one verb became. So simple. The horses became frightened and ran away. So now we have a simple sentence with a compound verb. So what this means is that a sentence can actually have two verbs and still be simple. So we're going to find out what actually makes a sentence compound. So then we have a more examples for our simple sentence. We have the horses and the cattle became frightened. So we have here two subjects, one and two but it's still simple. The horses and the cattle became frightened and ran away. Here we have two subjects, two verbs, but it is still simple as you can have a compound subject and a compound verb. So let's figure out what is the difference between a simple sentence and a compound sentence. So, the difference is a compound sentence contains two or more simple sentences. So it's not about the nouns and the verbs. It's about how many sentences are put together. They are connected by usually and, and also but, or, nor, for, 
and yet. So here is the difference. Our neighbors have a cat and we have a dog. So these are actually two separate sentences into one. It rained on Saturday, but we went to the beach anyway. Notice how there's two simple sentences. I can take the bus or dad can drive me. We did not bring our books, nor did we remember our lunches. We must leave for it is late. Arithmetic may seem difficult, yet anyone can learn it. You're going to notice a lot more of these connecting words in compound sentences. So just as a little trick and tip, when the sentence the compound sentence is talking about two different subjects and about two different ideas connected by these words, it's usually compound. But as we work, we're going to be able to better identify them. So on this page, you don't have to do any written work. Our written work is on page 55, which is also assigned for today, but it is not very long. So what you're doing is you're actually going to need a piece of notebook paper um, unless you can write small enough to squeeze them under, but of course, I'd rather you turn in neat work. So it says here to combine each pair of simple sentences into one compound sentence on notebook paper. Circle the comma and connecting word. So that just means that you should put a comma before your connecting word, as we saw on our previous page. So all you're doing is, for example, I'm going to do it with you. Number one says, the boys were in the backyard. No one is there now. So you're going to choose the best connecting word to connect those two sentences. So you could write, the boys were in the backyard, comma, but no one is there now. So I'm not going to write the whole sentence because it'll take long, but you would do something like that. You must water those flowers, they will die. These can be connected by, you must water those flowers, comma, or they will die. So it's, it's much simpler than it sounds. For remember B, um, you're just going back to verb. So this will be on a subject that we did before. So we're going to just, um, review our verb forms. So you're going to take a peek at the word in parentheses here and then write the appropriate word. So for number one, for example, it says the dog blank on the sleeping cat. And the word in parentheses is sneak. But you have to remember what is the past tense form of sneak. We learned that Oftentimes we use the word snuck, but snuck is not actually a word. So the past tense form of sneak is actually sneaked, and that's what you will put here. And that's a tricky one, so I'm glad we did that one together. But you're going to do the same thing for all of these. You're just going to use the word in parentheses to fit the correct version, the correct verb form into the sentences. Then for think see, you're just going to underline every verb two times, every subject one time. We're used to doing that. If the subject is you, write you in parentheses. So we did that before too. So that means if there's a request or a command, like an imperative sentence, then the subject is going to be you in parentheses. Identify the simple and compound sentences by writing S or C in the blanks. So, if the sentence is simple, you'll write S. If there are two sentences in one connected by one of those words, you'll write C for compound. Circle the comma, so it's the comma that comes before the connecting word, and the connecting words that join the parts of the compound sentences. So I'm going to do number one with you. It says, John will bring the popcorn and Ashley will make candy. So here, 
you're going to underline the verb twice, bring, will make, then underline the subject once. We have John and Ashley. Then, this is not an imperative sentence, it's just statement, so we don't have to write the word you, but we're going to identify the simple and compound sentence. So here we have a compound sentence because we have our first sentence, John will bring the popcorn, comma, and Ashley will make candy. So notice how there's a comma here. A trick is when there's a comma before the connecting word, it's almost always a compound sentence. So we're going to circle that comma and, and we're going to write C here for compound. So if you notice that the connecting word, which is usually and but not always, has a comma in front of it, I'd say it's usually compound. Notice on number three, we rode out to the island and had a picnic. So we're just talking about one subject really here, about one idea. So that one's probably going to be simple. And I'll be available, of course, to help if needed. And here we have our spelling work for Monday. We have our new list, list 10. And before we start with our pattern word exercise, I'm going to read all of the list words to you so you can um, hear the pronunciation. So we have evil, linen, raisin, metal, citizen, legend, human, recent, curtain, marvel, foreign, musical. Content words, we have dense, thicket, shrubs, sparse, climate, vegetation, woodlands. Vocabulary words are assignment, signals, convert, and convertible. So here we're learning about a schwa, and I always like teaching schwa because uh, not many people actually understand what a schwa is, so it's cool that you guys will. So what it is is a vowel sound identical to short U. So think about a short U sound. A short U sound would be a, uh, like bus, right? So there is a symbol called a schwa, S C H W A, and it looks like an upside down E. And this E sound, this E symbol, I mean, sounds like a short U. Now, the reason why the symbol is used is because oftentimes there are words that have a short U sound but don't actually have a U in them. So we use this symbol, this short E, to identify when the word or the letter has a short U sound but isn't a U. And we use this sound very often and don't even notice it. So for example, it says on number one to find the words with the schwa sound before the letter um, L. So I'm going to give you a few examples. Here, evil. Notice how we do not say evil because this is a short I sound, we think. But we actually don't say evil, we say evil. Notice that, evil. That short U sound, even though it's an I, represents a schwa. Then we have, for example, another, so we would write evil here just in, in case. To find another word with a schwa sound before the letter L. So we have another word here with a letter L in it. Metal. Notice how we do not say metal, which would be an A sound. We just say metal naturally. Metal. Uh, uh. Notice that that A is actually a short U sound. That represents a schwa. We would write metal here. So you will do three and four on your own, two words that have a 
short U, schwa sound before the L. And then for five through 12, you're going to do the schwa sounds before the letter N, which will actually be the rest of the words. So if you can find those two words that have that schwa sound before the L, the rest will be easy. But I'll give you an example for linen, linen for number five. We do not say linen like an E sound. We say linen, an schwa sound. And all of these words have a schwa sounding letter. So now that we've learned that, we can now better identify when we are actually pronouncing vowels as a short U sound instead of the vowel that it is. So that is pretty cool. And then here for your content word exercise, I don't think I have to repeat the same instructions every week, but of course I will always remind you to use your spelling dictionary if you're having a hard time um, deciding which of the words belongs. And here it looks like we only have two S words that might be confusing. So just read those uh, sentences out loud for context clues and look in the back of your book. So here is a little reading reminder. So now that we have finished our chapter book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and we are awaiting our next chapter book, Bridge to Terabithia, in the meantime, we're going to learn a little bit of Shakespeare. And those of you who were in the same school last year know that I do this Shakespeare project with the fifth graders. So what we are going to do is we're going to practice a passage from one of Shakespeare's plays and we're going to learn about who Shakespeare was. So just join me on Zoom at 11 with a piece of paper and we're going to practice some passages and have a lot of fun together. So I'm very excited about that.